right, 5-3, we are talking about uh, medians of a triangle, and today by the end of the video you should be able to apply properties of medians of a triangle, and then we're not really going to apply the altitude of a triangle, but I would like you to know the definition. So those are our two main objectives. And to start, let's first um, talk about what exactly a median is. So a median of a triangle connects the vertex of one, uh, one vertex of a triangle to the opposite side, and it hits at the midpoint of that side. So those tick marks mean that D is the midpoint. It doesn't necessarily hit it perpendicularly. This is not a perpendicular line, but it does always meet at the midpoint. So we're going to find that when you connect all the medians, there's going to be three medians of a triangle. So if I connect, let's say there's the midpoint of this side. So there's one median connected to the opposite vertex. Let's say for this side, let's say I say this is the midpoint, so these two sides are going to be connected to these two sides, and then I connect that to its opposite <laughs> vertex, sorry. And then again, similarly, this is the midpoint of this side, one, two, three. So I'll put the tick marks to show that that's the midpoint, and if I connect it to its opposite side, even though it doesn't look like it in my picture. Sorry, it's a horrible line. They're going to all meet at one place. Let me try to redraw that. There we go. Okay, they're all going to meet in one point, and that point is going to be called the centroid. So the centroid is where those three uh, points, those three medians meet. So the point where the medians intersect, which remember is called the point of concurrency, where they all intersect, that's called the centroid of the triangle. So centroid and medians are, re uh, are related. And there's something special that happens with the centroid. We don't, uh, we don't, you know, come up with random points of concurrency unless it really means something. So why the centroid is important is because it's always inside the triangle and it's considered the center of gravity. So <clears throat> that's the point where, where if you balance the triangle on that point, if you, if you put your finger on that, that point, it would be balanced because it's, it's considered the center of gravity. Or if you threw it, if you threw that triangle, it would rotate about around that point. So that's, that's important for physics. In terms of geometry, there's a theorem, so you can add this onto your, onto your um, cheat sheet if you want. And basically, the theorem says that if those three mediums intersect, which they always will. So let's say I did that again, and I found out, okay, this was my centroid. So I'm going to say this is my centroid. Again, the centroid is the intersection of the three medians. It's going to be two-thirds of the distance <coughs> from the vertex to the midpoint. So let's say this is the midpoint. Okay, and how one important thing that you that you know too is is how can you tell whether or not this is this is the centroid versus the circumcenter or the incenter that we've been talking about? Remember, um, centroid deals with medians. Medians connect the midpoints of an op of one side to the opposite vertex, and uh, so that's how you, you can tell that the circumcenter deals with perpendicular bisectors. So those remember perpendicular bisectors are mid midpoint do meet at the midpoint, but they're also perpendicular, so they have right angles. And then the uh, in center that one dealt with. Uh, that one dealt with well, with angle bisectors. So it's important that you know that this is just talking about the midpoint, not angle bisectors. These are not necessarily these angles are not necessarily bisected, and this line is not necessarily perpendicular. Um, so that's the difference between those three that we've talked about so far. Let me give these some labels. Okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit more simpler, and we're just gonna talk about one median for a second, so you can really figure out the the centroid theorem. Okay, so. Let's say we're looking at this one median, and here's my centroid right here. So I connected all three medians, and this is the point where they all intersected. Okay, I'm going to give these some some labels. I'm going to call this point point A, this point P, and let's call this centroid Y. Why not, right? Okay, so the centroid theorem says that the point from the uh, vertex to uh, to the to the opposite side, this is uh, to the centroid, sorry, the point from the vertex of the centroid, this is going to be two-thirds of the whole thing. So this section right here is going to be two-thirds of the whole thing, two-thirds of AP, the whole thing, AP. Oops, I did this one wrong. Okay, so let's see. Mm -mm -mm, I wrote these wrong. Let me rewrite this. So we know that the 
the first part, AY, is going to be two-thirds of the whole centroid, AP. Okay, and um, I wrote this one wrong, too. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to give you guys numbers. For example, I'm going to tell you that AP equals um, 12. And I'll wanna, I want you to figure out what is AY. Well, what you could do is you could plug it into this this equation right here. Okay, the whole thing is 12. So AY is going to be 2 thirds of 12. And then you can multiply your fractions. 2 times 12 is 24. And 3 times 1 is 3. 24 divided by 3 equals 8. So that, will, that way we know AY equals 8. Okay, so now I know that this part is 8. Let's say I wanted to figure out what YP is. Well, there's a couple different things you guys can do. One thing you could say is, well, if this is two-thirds of the whole thing, then this leftover piece has to be one-third of the whole thing, AP. So one, one thing you could do is say that the larger piece, AY, equals two-thirds of the entire thing. The other thing you could think about is that the smaller part, YP, so this one's the larger part of the median, this one's the smaller part of the median, is going to be one-third of the whole thing because two-thirds plus one-third equals the whole median. Now, that's one way you can think about it. So you could say, okay, if I wanted to find out what YP is, I could just do a third of the whole thing, 24, and that's going to be, um, wait, what did I do wrong? I did, is the whole thing 24? What am I assuming? The whole thing is 12, excuse me. So, um, yeah, the whole thing is 12. Uh, so the whole thing divided by 3, that would be 4. So then I know that now that this part is going to be 4. A simpler thing, if you didn't want to use this equation, you could say that the bigger part, AY, is just going to be 2 times as big as the smaller part. So notice we said that this piece was 8. The smaller piece is just going to be half of it, so it's going to be 4. And to check your work, if you add up these two pieces, let's see if I did this one right, AY, that's the bigger piece, plus TY, that's the smaller piece, equals the whole thing, yeah. To check your work, I would use this formula. And that the whole piece, I'm sorry, the bigger piece plus the, plus the smaller piece has to equal the whole thing. So 8 plus 4, does it equal the whole thing 12? Yes, it does. I know that's a little confusing it's from the beginning, but let's try it and let's see if that works. If this will make more sense to you guys. Okay, so one thing, I'm going to give you pictures like this on the test, and you're not going to know, I'm not going to tell you if this is centroid, circumcenter, or in center. So looking at this triangle, if you notice each side has tick marks, that means P is the midpoint of this side and L, Q is the midpoint of this side and L, and um, R is the midpoint of this side. So since we're talking about midpoints, we're talking about medians, because there's no perpendicular lines here that they've told us. So since we're talking about medians, that means we're talking about the centroid, and we're going to use the centroid theorem. Okay, in this picture it says RL equals 21. So let's just look at that piece for a second. So this whole thing is 21. The whole thing, RL equals 21. If I wanted to find out what SL is, that's the bigger part. So I know that that's going to be 2 thirds of the whole thing, 21. So if I multiply that, 2 times 21 is 42, and then divided by 3, let's see, <laughs> I think I'm going to get 3, 1, 12, uh, 14. Okay, so SL equals 14. So now this part is 14. Now, if I wanted to find SR, I could say, okay, well, that's a smaller piece that's going to be one-third of the whole thing. Or, since I already know what one piece is, right, I already know that this piece is 14, and I know that the whole thing is 21, rather, rather than using this equation, I could just say, subtract these two. I could say SR, the missing piece, plus the bigger piece, which I already found. If I added those up, it's going to equal the whole median, 21. So then I subtract, and I get SR equals 7. And if you did this way, either also you would still get seven so either way there's lots of ways you guys can solve this one okay so that's pretty much all you can do with with that information right if I give you the whole thing you can break it down and find out what the two two parts of the median is going to be based on the centroid s is the centroid right um, let's see what else 
uh, if sq equals 4, so let's deal with this information now, sq equals 4, so this part is 4, um, what can I do with that, knowing that the s is the centroid? Well, since this is a smaller part, I know that the bigger part is just going to be double it. So all I would have to do is double it, and I'd get that this is 8. If I really wanted to use the other formula, I know that 4 is the smaller part, so it's going to be third, a third of the whole thing, nq. And so that means that the whole thing is going to be 12, because the opposite of dividing by 3 is multiplying by 3. So the whole thing is going to be 12. And then if you look at your work, let's see, the smaller piece is 4, the larger piece was 8, and 4 plus 8 is 12. So that's kind of the process that you're going to do. And, and there's going to be easy problems on your, um, on your assignment. A harder problem I could do, a harder problem I can do is, let's say, I give you this triangle, and of course I put the tick mark so you know we're talking about the medians and the centroids. Let's say I told you that... Um, let's see where that problem go. Oh yeah, let's say that this part is going to be 2n plus 17, and let's say that this part is going to be 27, and all I want you to do is find n. Okay, well, we know we're talking about medians and centroids, and we know we have the bigger part and we have the smaller part. There's two different ways you can do this, the easy way and the hard way. <laughs> Hard way is you could, uh, let's do the easy way first. Easy way is you know the relationship between the bigger part and the smaller part is that the bigger part is two times bigger than the smaller part. So the bigger part is two times the smaller part. So we can just use that as an equation. The bigger part, the bigger piece of the median was 2n plus 17. The smaller part was 27. So you can just fill it in and solve from there. And you should be able to, I think n equals 8.6. 18.5, but just check it and see if I'm wrong. The harder way to do it is that the um, bigger part of the median equals two-thirds of the whole median. So the bigger part was 2n plus 17. It's going to equal two-thirds of the whole median. The whole median is the 2n plus 17 plus the 27. So that would be, let's see, 2n plus, let's see, 17 plus 27 is 44. No, 54. No, no. 54. Rah. 54. <laughs> no. <laughs> 17 plus 27. Oh my goodness. Okay, 44 plus 44. And then you, if you really wanted to solve this and challenge yourself, you could, and you would still get n equals 18.5. So those are the two different ways to approach that problem. Okay, so that's all the things we're going to be doing with the median. Last thing I want to just talk about are altitudes. We're not going to do any, there's, there's a special name for when all the altitudes meet, and that's orthocenter, but we're really not going to talk about the orthocenter that much. Uh, I want you to really know that the altitude is the line, it's a perpendicular line from the side to the opposite vertex. So, for example, if I wanted to go from this vertex to this line and I wanted it to be perpendicular, again, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the bisector, it doesn't mean it's the midpoint. So let's say, let's say this is a right, let's see, right angle, right angle, that looks like a right angle to me. So that would be considered the altitude. And that's important for when we talk about area of things. It's not always inside the triangle, but it is considered the height of an object. So sometimes instead of saying area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2, it's important to know that this height we're talking about is the altitude. And then it doesn't have to be necessarily inside the triangle. For example, if I wanted to go from this point, this vertex, to this side, um, it would be impossible for me to draw a perpendicular line inside the triangle. Rather, I'd have to go outside the triangle to find that, that right angle, that perpendicular line. So sometimes the altitude can be outside. So for the two things we talked about in this video are medians and altitudes. And they're important. Remember, median is the, um, and the centroid is the center of gravity, which is pretty fun uh, stuff for physics. Uh, on your, to test yourself, you're going to be on page, da, 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 page 317 in your textbook. You're going to attempt to do number, try it, try, and I believe you guys can do this. Page 317, I want to see if you guys can do 3 through 6. So um, if you need to rewatch uh, re the video to, to break it down, these are the easier types of questions that I could ask you. And the fun fact of the video is, um, let's see, where was it? Oh, yeah, Vegas. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about Vegas. Remember, there's no, no number 13s. No floor 13s in the uh, in the hotels. Another fun fact about Vegas is inside the casinos, there are no clocks. 
So next time you guys go to Vegas, there's two fun things for you guys to investigate. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. <laughs> Bye.